It's not normal for people to be in prison for doing politics. That's what the Flemish Minister President said today about the situation of nine Catalan politicians currently in pre-trial jail. Hello and welcome to Catalan News. The Catalan president Kim Torra and his Flemish counterpart Gid Bourgeois met today in Barcelona and both rejected the rebellion charges against Catalan officials. In our show today we'll find out how the meeting unfolded and we'll also get you the latest on an attack on a photojournalist in the city streets. One of the exiled Catalan leaders is in Scotland and some others are in Belgium. Last week the Catalan president met the Scottish First Minister and today he met the Minister President of Flanders. The outcome of both meetings was similar. The Catalan president, Kim Torra, met today with his counterpart in Flanders, Hirt Bourgeois. A member of the new Flemish alliance, he said he was very concerned about the situation of pro-independence leaders in jail or abroad, and added that in his opinion there are no grounds for charging them with the crime of rebellion. Oh, I have full respect for the independence of justice, but in my opinion uh, this is not a case of uh, rebellion because it's uh, a political act, it's freedom of expression. Bourgeois said he was glad that the executives in Madrid and Catalonia have finally engaged in dialogue. He reminded that the Flemish parliament called for political dialogue and even urged the European Union to intervene. It's the second time in about a week that President Kim Torra meets with a political leader in Europe. The president himself said that today's meeting was actually just as important as the one he had uh, last week with the First Minister of Scotland. In both meetings they discussed the political situation in Catalonia, but also the situation of the politicians who are in jail, but also seeking refuge in other European countries. There are currently nine leaders in prison and seven abroad. Among them, there are six members of the Catalan Parliament, including former President Carles Puigdemont. The Supreme Court ordered them to give up their seats until a final ruling determines whether or not they are guilty of rebellion. The measure would apply to some of the most influential political figures of the Catalan independence movement. But Parliament lawyers have found an alternative. They could be temporarily replaced by some of her party colleagues, but would keep their right to vote, just like they are already doing now, voting through a delegate from prison, a possibility that the main unionist party does not like. El que no podem acceptar de cap de les maneres és que està suspès sigui exactament igual que no està suspès, perquè això és un frau, això és un frau. It is yet to be seen, though, what the Supreme Court has to say. A group of individuals and organizations were today awarded with the Creu de Sant Jordi, or St. George's Cross, one of the highest public distinctions in Catalonia. The organizations honored include Proactiva Open Arms, an NGO that rescues refugees stranded in the Mediterranean Sea. In fact, today, this very NGO was denied entry to Italian ports, and its director condemned the fact that migrants are still dying and being abandoned by the authorities in the Mediterranean. Their work was praised by the Catalan government, which today recognized groups preventing fires and the association bringing together relatives of the jailed and exiled leaders. Some individuals from the cultural world were also honoured, as well as the man who lost an eye due to Spanish police violence during the October 1 referendum. Yesterday we told you about the presentation of a new political platform launched by Carlos Puigdemont. One of the journalists covering the event, Jordi Borras, was attacked by an off-duty Spanish police officer when he left the venue. The assailant reportedly shouted, long live Spain and dictator Franco. An expert on Spain's far-right groups, Borras has presented a lawsuit against the officer. However, the officer claims the journalist insulted the police and Spain. The political reactions to these events reached the country's top authorities. No pot passar que, que el fascisme corri impune pels carrers de Catalunya o que veiem manifestacions de feixistes al Valle de los Caídos i aquí no passi res. Eh, Europa no entén res del que està passant amb aquest revival franquista a l'estat espanyol. L'agressió al fotoperiodista Jordi Borràs per nosaltres és, és greu. Ja feia temps que l'extrema dreta l'havia posat en la seva diana per la seva tasca de, de denúncia i d'ajuda a les víctimes d'agressions. I precisament per això, per el seu paper clau a l'hora de tirar endavant aquestes denúncies, ens personarem en la causa com a acusació popular, exercirem l'acusació popular 
perquè entenem que defensar aquest fotoperiodista és defensar els col·lectius vulnerables que són víctimes de l'odi dels grups d'extrema dreta. The different administrations in Catalonia are increasingly making efforts to put forward environmental policies. Sustainability is another topic gaining relevance recently, and this includes not only the environment, but economics and housing. If we divided Catalonia in three equal parts, we would find forests or vegetation in two of them, and in the third we mostly find agriculture fields and urban areas. Making of Catalonia a sustainable country is one of the challenges of the 21st century. 2030 is the year set by the United Nations to achieve some 17 goals in sustainability and environment. Putting an end to poverty, hunger and inequalities are some of the priorities, along with building peaceful, fair and inclusive societies and protecting human rights. And of course, taking care of the environment and a sustainable economic growth are also among the aims. And Catalonia is committed to these goals. The Catalan Foreign Minister took part in a debate at the UN in New York to debate on the strategies to implement these 17 aims. Master Pau Casals, climate in front of the United Nations General Assembly, in this same building, the commitment of Catalonia with peace and freedom is a result of our history. Pau Casals' wars nowadays still prevail. Protecting the natural heritage and the biodiversity is one of the policies carried out by the different administrations in the country. Reducing waste, improving the preservation of indigenous species and raising awareness about the importance of taking care of natural wealth are just some of the measures approved this week by government. But Catalonia also has urban areas and they need other kinds of protection. The mayor of Barcelona was also in New York this week to continue her quest against housing speculation. In the past few weeks she got support from Paris and London. Porque hay algunas cuestiones que las podemos hacer a nivel municipal y las estamos haciendo, como esta regulación del 30% en las nuevas promociones de vivienda, que nos hemos inspirado en la experiencia de París y en la experiencia de Londres. Ada Colau presented in New York a declaration supported by big cities in the wall, urging governments to give them more powers in housing. Now time for culture. Exhibitions and arts festivals are not only being held in Catalonia's biggest urban areas. With only 60 inhabitants, Bilamur in the Pyrenees will this summer host a festival to promote local contemporary artists. Held in this workshop, it will feature some 20 creators. Apart from the works, visitors will also be able to enjoy music, dance and theatre performances. The organisers hope this event leads to the foundation of an association of the area's artists. As we reach the end of our show, we want to show you images of a circus fair held in La Bisbal d'Empordà in the northeastern part of the country. Around 30,000 people witnessed all kinds of jugglers. Enjoy this taste and see you tomorrow. <laughs>